Hey, uh, Gail Cotton here from Kinetic Clinics. Um, throughout the COVID lockdown, I have been doing a lot of work here from my home and this kitchen table has become my desk. Um, it's not very good for the neck and for the upper part of the shoulders. And so I've been I'm noticing my head, uh, more headaches, waking up with a tight neck. And I think a lot of you out there will probably be feeling the same way. So it pushed me into putting together a little bit of a, a self-help neck massage video for you all. Um, it's something that I do regularly for myself and it does help. So I thought I'd try and put something out there to help all of you guys who are still uh, sitting at your home desks on the kitchen table. So the first thing that I, I want to tell you is that the, the stuff that we're going to be doing is, um, is not going to be very particularly very pleasant to do. Um, I don't want you to be too hard on yourself. It, it's designed to be a very superficial, what we call a myofascial release type massage. Um, it's using the fist, it's using the thumbs, um, but it's designed to be very slow um, and very controlled. So we're going to start off with the what's called the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now if I turn my head, you will see it comes down as a, um, a, a tight band of muscle from just in front of the ear down into this point in front of the chest. And it gets very, very tight, almost like a, um, a guitar string when you're coming forwards with your head like so as you're typing away. So what we're going to do first off, I'm sat here at the kitchen table, I'm going to make a fist with my hand and with the same side I'm going to put, put the knuckle, this is where my voice is going to go funny because obviously it's very close to the voice box, I'm going to put my fist just in front of that guitar string like muscle and from here I'm going to sustain the pressure, I'm resting on the table with my elbow and I'm just going to push backwards towards my ear and just let it glide. And as it starts to glide towards my ear, I'm going to turn my head away. Oh, that's not nice. Until it slips off at the end. Okay, you can do that two or three times in each on each side, so changing sides again to do uh, on the other side. Um, and that's the first one is sternocleidomastoid. Okay, the second one we're gonna do, and I'm gonna have to take my glasses off for this, is gonna be working in this area here around the ear. Now, if you just give that area a good rub, you will probably feel that it's quite tender already. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our two fingers we're going to get just behind the ear in that little groove there. And if you just go down a little bit, you'll feel a pointy bone. That's called the mastoid process. We're going to start underneath the mastoid process. And we are going to just glide slowly up and around. It might pull your hair a little bit, so uh, I apologise for that. But keep the pressure as the fingers glide upwards towards this area okay right into the temple area there and sustain the pressure and hold it for a few seconds and then release and do it again starting from the mastoid process again that little bony bit just at the base of the skull there we are going to work our way with a thumb underneath the skull Okay, so we're going to start with the thumb here, keep the pressure, slowly working underneath the skull until you get, you'll probably start to feel the little, prob, uh, the little processes on the top of your spine as you get into here. But working towards the centre line and you would then go on and do the same on the other side. Okay, now this is where it gets really messy. So 
The first one we did, sternocleidomastoid, if you feel your weight to that muscle and then just go behind it and if you press down it'll probably feel quite uncomfortable and quite nervy because you're, you're digging into the brachial plexus which feeds into the arm. So don't go onto the nerve but just come upwards a little bit. Now that will be very, very, it's virtually underneath the earlobe now and we're working up towards the earlobe. This will probably feel very, very tight and almost as though you can't press in at all. So be very kind to yourself on this one, but remember you need to be effective. So we're gonna be working upwards, slowly. And this is known as the anterior scalene muscle. Um, it's, it gets very, very tight with that forward head posture. And it does, it is one of the major contributors to headaches. There are three of the scalene muscles, the front one, the middle one, and the back one. And what we're gonna do once we've worked on the front one is we're going to start to work backwards a little bit do the same thing going up just behind it. Now, the thing with the scalene is if it's really locked up, especially on the anterior one, you'll know you're on it because if you press onto that un uncomfortable muscle, take a big deep breath in and it will probably be more painful as you breathe in. And that's because it, it is involved quite a bit with apical breathing into the neck. So we work our way back through anterior lateral and posterior scalene. The posterior scalene is quite close to the base of the skull here, okay? And we are gonna be working on that one next. So the next one we're gonna work on is a muscle called levator scapulae. And it does what it says, it elevates the scapula, the shoulder blade, it runs from the tip of the shoulder blade here all the way up to the base of the skull and what we're going to do here is start to work you'll find the big trapezius muscle which is a big triangular shoulder muscle we're, we're dipping underneath that so going underneath you may also feel the transverse processes of the of the cervical vertebrae at this point as well so we're going to just work our way up the levator scapulae. Now I get to a bit here and it's really, really meaty. Just underneath, about an inch underneath the skull. And that's where I really need to work on. So what I'm going to do here is just turn my head downwards and upwards. And I'm going to get into that and look down. And it really, so if you hold the pressure and then tilt your head downwards, it will really release into that. Now this one, we're going to work right up. I'm just going to turn around. We're going to work right up into the occiput regions with our thumbs. So I'm now underneath the skull, pushing upwards and looking down. Push up, look down. And the last one we're going to do is for what's known as the suboccipitals. Now, we're going to work with both thumbs, again, pushing in together on either sides of those meaty muscles that run right up to the base of the skull. And I want you to get right underneath there. And you will probably, by pressing both thumbs together, they will very, very close, come very close together at the base of the skull. And from here, what you can do is use your eyes to look in different directions and you will actually be able to feel those muscles moving at the back. That's an indication of how the eyes and the neck muscles are all interconnected. So by working on this from the center, we're going to work out towards that mastoid process again. So we're working underneath the skull, working right underneath, give it a good little rub, rub in there and you can keep looking down as well to release it off. 
right out to this mastoid process, the little bony prominence on the base of the skull here. So I, there you've got probably eight different massage techniques to use on the neck. You might not need them all. There might be some areas that are worse than others and some that are easier to do than others. So use them according to your needs. If you feel that you need to do them all every day, then do them. This will really help to release the neck, both front and back, and get the neck back into a the head back into alignment with the spine. The problem with heads coming forwards is it makes all of this very, very closed in. It makes all of this very, very overstretched. And the base of the skull here becomes very short and very tight, which can lead to headaches and other problems. So if you can do this regularly, get the chin back towards the chest, get the neck nice and high, it will alleviate a lot of tension that you're feeling because of your desk-based situation. So give it a try. Let me know how you get on. I'll be interested and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye now.